In a small town down in Arkansas Where the river flows There's a man with a passion That everybody knows He's got a collection That'll make you stare Vintage pocket knives Laid with tender care Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome this morning to HT's EDC. Coming at you this morning from the front porch. It is a wet and rainy and soggy morning here in the stone. And uh, yeah, the back patio just wasn't the move this morning. We got wet, soggy chairs out there. So thought we'd come out here and uh, get on the good dry front porch and shoot this one this morning. And as always, I have my number one gal there. If I can get her in frame there, there is Miss Abby. She is right here at my feet to my right this morning and uh, we're ready to get at it. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, Tuesday, it is election day today. So if you are one of those that vote on the day of, no problem with that whatsoever. Just make sure you do. Uh, that's all I ask. Uh, do your uh, civic, civil duties, and uh, some very important uh, decisions and uh, upcoming. Not going to tell you who to vote for. That is not my place whatsoever. But as long as you vote uh, and you make your voice heard, uh, that is all I care about. Um, so, yeah, make sure, uh, make sure you get out there and uh, do that today. And... Uh, yeah, that's all I got on that front. Um, what else is going on? I uh, was very happy the other day uh, to see uh, Jason, Ozark Boy, actually uh, made another video. I have made a video. I have been waiting for that. And, buddy, that warmed my heart to see you uh, back doing your thing. Uh, I know I talked to him actually yesterday again on the phone, and he is... He is still in uh, plenty of discomfort uh, getting over, trying to get over his uh, latest surgery, but uh, it was very good to see him feel up to enough to uh, to get out a video, and uh, I'm sure that warm, it warmed my heart. I'm sure it warmed some of you guys, lifted some of you guys' spirits as well, so shout out to Jason and a little praise report for that, uh, that he was feeling good enough to, uh, to throw us some content our way. Um, brother Steven over at, uh, the Blade Walker channel. Uh, I know he, uh, is continually, uh, having some difficulties, uh, uh, health problems. Uh, I will, again, not my place to get into all those. Uh, but, uh, if you follow that channel or you're a friend of Steven, uh, let him know you love him and, uh, Hopefully, if you do this, let him know you're praying for him. And uh, Brother Stephen, I personally, I sent up one for you uh, myself uh, this morning. And uh, we will try to continue to keep you in our prayers. But, uh, yeah, know he, is, uh, know he is going through it now. And uh, I'm sure would welcome welcome the prayers. And, uh, and like I say, get over there and drop him a line of encouragement, too. But uh, anyway, there's that. So let's go on, get into what you're toting this morning. Nothing new. Key fob, pocket cross in the front left pocket. And today, which is going to roll right into uh, my video, we are toting, everybody knows this, the magnetic MKM magnetic slip. But we are toting the old Queen Big Chief this morning. One of my absolute favorite carries right now. Love this thing. It is a uh, on the Granddaddy Barlow frame. This is an all aluminum chassis, which we'll get into. We won't get into the specifics, but uh, this is my Queen uh, Queen made Big Chief, and uh, you guys have seen this on my channel before has one of the most stellar walk and talks i have in my collection this thing is amazing thin behind the edge just a fantastic user work knife 
Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually, my wife's deer head the other night, some of y'all might laugh at this, uh, when we uh, sheared off her horns uh, for her deer head, um, I actually used this knife to trim away, do all that trimming. Once the horns were, you know, cleaning off those antlers, this little guy right here was my knife of choice. I said I needed something thin, uh, durable, you know, thin that was going to really slice and really cut and could get in there and uh, do some intricate cuts. Yeah, I went and pulled this guy the other night. But uh, just one of my favorite carries as far as getting something done and just sheerly cutting things you, a cutting tool this is one of my favorite cutting tools is this thing beautiful is there anything ornate and gorgeous about this no not really <laughs> it's uh it's a piece of uh a piece of uh in integral integral aluminum folded aluminum and a stainless steel blade but it just cuts so Anyway, listen to that walk and talk. That's what I'm going to tote today. And what we're going to show you guys today is a second. <laughs> Liked it so much, I got a second one. And this one is the Big Chief. Check out that art on that box. The old Big Chief there. And this is by Cooper Cutlery. You can see here in Winchester, Ohio, Cooper Cutlery, what do we got down here? Handmade, hand sharpened, stainless steel, turn it around back, made in the USA. Uh, yeah, your, what is it, your cancer warning, yeah, your California cancer warning. Anyway, has the nice tubes, kind of a la uh, GEC, nice touch. But these are now being made by Cooper Cutlery uh, out of Winchester, Ohio. They have, uh, Cooper uh, has picked up a lot of the old Queen, the Shatton Morgan, uh, those lines, the, the Queen lines that, uh, you know, had, had closed and, and been gone away for a while. But uh, they have, I believe they bought some of the old equipment uh, Cooper bought some of the old equipment in the Queen shop and moved it uh, to their place there in Winchester, Ohio. And uh, I guess they have the naming rights. Uh, they they uh, got the old Queen name and the Shatton Morgan name. And then they have a, uh, a bunch of uh, stuff under their own, you know, their own name that they're coming out with. Uh, I know that uh, traditional pocket knives, if you hadn't seen these guys, I know one place that carries them for sure, and, I, and there's more than this. But if you're familiar with uh, Brother Austin over at TraditionalPocketKnives.com, uh, they carry that. Uh, they carry this line. And uh, they are really, I, th I think when they first came out, they were a little so-so. Eh, uh, when they were cutting their teeth on Q their QC, some of their QC was a little meh. Uh, but since then, their second, third, you know, their stuff they're putting out right now, uh, per Austin, and I, I will respect his opinion a lot more than mine, uh, he said it's, it's, it's right there with GEC quality, and you guys may be taken aback by that, not my words, but, uh, you know, the person that gets them in, handles them, and, uh, he comes, he's got a lot of experience, he is saying that, uh, Cooper is getting right there they are a very their qc is good they've got the kinks uh worked out and another hey folks it's another usa all americana uh company that's producing knives here in the state so hey uh, we gotta support them uh the, you know the history the camillus is the Srade usa's uh we don't support them or whatever uh they they can go away so this is another USA company that, uh, anyway, I support them here. I'm trying them out. And actually, Aaron Williams, old A-Dub, he gave me the heads up on this. Uh, he seen uh, a couple of these big chiefs. He knew I, I was a big chief fan. Uh, the one that uh, I'm carrying today, he knows how, uh, he knew what a fan I was of that knife. And he actually seen a couple of these online, 
and uh, he sent me uh, he sent me uh, a message and said, "Hey man, they got those big chiefs by Cooper Cutlery. I know you're a fan of them. They got a couple of them right now on real good price. There's only two of them left, and I'm fixing to pick one up. And there's there's gonna be one more left. What do you think?" And I said, "Well, what do I think? I, I said I, I think I'm gonna give it a try. Thank you, buddy. Anyway." We snatched those two up, and uh, here we go. The only thing, and this is a look at it right here before we get it all opened up. Matter of fact, I'll get both of them out where you can see. New one, Big Chief, the little stiffling on here on their aluminum. The old, obviously that's a lot more shiny. You can see that faux bolster down here it's got a lot of shine to it and mine's a little dulled up but this is like a who knows a 1960s 1970s model right here but uh i mean it is the same flipping them back around on the back side for all intents and purposes check them out on the back this is a new one nice and shiny this is the old one kind of dull and flat but same knife. Uh, I will get into some differences here in a minute. But the thing about this one, and we're going to have to go ahead and open it up to talk about it. This one, what you're seeing right now, is a sheep's foot. Well, as they come out of the box, this was a hawk bill. And this, this, this point right here, swoop down, you guys know what a hawk bill is. Had a very had a, a definite uh, a definite downward hook here on this blade, uh, kind of like a rigging knife or a pruning knife, if you know it by that uh, by that name. What an old pruning knife is, but anyway, it had a definite curve in here. That blade went like this. Well, I'm not a Hawkbill fan. Uh, neither was Aaron. And Aaron, when he got his in, he's you know I don't know how long it was, but he sent me a picture. He's like. Man, I wiped that hawk bill out. I just made mine straight. You know, it's easier to sharpen. He wasn't a fan of the hawk bill on it too, and I'm like, man, that's that's all right. So, long story short, he he pulled it off. I seen his what he did to his blade to get rid of that hawk bill. This was part of those uh, conglomerate of knives I sent Aaron, and this was his third mod. Uh, you seen my two. Uh, other uh, folding hunters that he he colored, he inked, he uh, he burnt. Well, this was the third mod, and basically what he did for me is the same thing. He got rid of that hawk bill, and now we just have just a pretty much straight across. It has ever so slightly right up here. He probably got 95, 97% of that recurve out. But if you can see up here just Probably from right here on, there's just a little bit uh, of downward cant to that blade still, but way better. I mean, before it was, whoop, it was a hawkbill. It was a pruning knife, and now uh, we've pretty much got a sheep's foot. Uh, what do I think about this blade? Do I think this is the prettiest sheep's foot foot in the world? I do not, uh, but uh, it is a lot more useful. Now, for me, it is a lot easier to sharpen. I am not really crazy about this blade, how it just comes, 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 and whew, aggressively just falls off the clip here, uh, falls off the clip cliff, if I can talk this morning, how this blade comes and falls off the cliff and goes straight down uh, to, the, uh, to the point. I would a lot rather this kind of come out a little more subtly, like a you know more traditional sheep's foot, um, but it is what it is. Um, that, that's, that's how they made it. And, uh, not the most attractive, my personal opinion, you may love this. You may think it's fine. I, I just don't think it's the most aesthetically pleasing blade, uh, sheep's foot I've ever seen. But, uh, Hey, this knife ain't a, isn't a looker. It is, it's beautifully simplistic. I don't think it's ugly. I mean, you know, you cover up that blade, uh, you know, you got a Barlow frame here in all aluminum. I mean, it ain't ugly, but, you know, this isn't beautiful bone. This isn't stag. This isn't fancy jigging, coloring. 
it, it's it's a molded a folded over piece of aluminum uh, that just works. Um, and one of these things uh, claim to fame also is their stainlessness. These were actually uh, produced kind of as a uh, <clears throat> like a boating knife, uh, something that was going to be almost impervious to corrosion. So they went with a very stainless steel blade. And all the hardware on here and everything is either stainless steel, and of course, the the chassis here is 100% uh, an integral folded over piece of aluminum. So this thing can just be used and abused, and you know, it's it's not going to rust on you. I mean, if you within reason, folks, you know, if you're going to go live it, leave it uh, coated in salt water for a month, it may you know it may do. You know, get some spots on it, some surface rust. But for all intents and purposes, cutting fruit, cutting vegetables or whatever, if you rinse it off whatsoever, or honestly, even if you forget to rinse it off and just put it back, you cut your apple, put this back in your pocket, you're not going to have any stain and you're not going to have any problem with this. Uh, you would have to just almost try to make this rust uh, and this color to, to get it to do it. Uh, very, very corrosion resistant. So that is a plus. So somebody out there, you fishermen or boaters or whatever, kayakers, something like a big chief, eh? definitely cut your bait up or whatever, you know, but uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, let's go through walk and talk. Now I will say this, this knife right here, the old one, You've heard me say it. I'm saying it again. It probably, yeah, I'm going to say it. It's probably, it's, it's my number one knife in my collection on walk and talk. It has just a ridiculous wall. It has half stops. The wall is just bam. It is, well, I'll show you real quick. Again, we're not here to talk about this one, but listen to this. Look at that wall. Look how far I can come over here take my finger off of it. You hear that? Same way this way. That is, get it over here. Ridiculous. Walk and talk. This one, is good. Not you don't hear that thwack, that thud of the other one, but coming back into half stop. Look at that. Another good wall this way. Didn't quite go back there, but went a little too far. Nice solid wall. Look at that. Very good. A very good walk and talk, and this is just next. This is just ridiculous here. So if you're comparing it to this, that's probably unfair. The old queen. This is as good as it gets. I am telling you, uh, I've got a lot of pocket knives, and I will put this one walk and talk on anything I own. And this is good. Uh, this is really good. But you know. <laughs> It's what you're comparing it to. The bar over here is really high, but there is nothing wrong with this. Uh, centering. Eh, let's see. Is it just kind of lazy in there? It is kind of, kind of moves around a little bit inside, but uh, not bad. See that centering there? Favoring the show side, the Big Chief logo side just a little bit, but uh, definitely... Definitely not scraping any walls or anything. And some of the magic of this being this sheep's foot, my goodness gracious, look at this meat. You talk about a knife you just want to pull out of your pocket and use. Look at this meat. This is the perfect knife for me and my arthritic fingers. Look at all that to just pinch. I mean... You can grab it from right here, about midway of the knife, all the way to that tip. And just, I can grab it back here too. Look at where I'm. Ridiculously pinchable. 
Uh, that is really nice. Uh, <laughs> and the, obviously, that is the way you are supposed to open this knife because there is zero nail nick. It is a completely sterile blade minus on the tang stamp we have big chief here on this show side it says big chief here uh on the handle on the cover and big chief here and if you flip it around the back winchester ohio does it say usa what does it say here winchester ohio and something i really like you can see down there 2022 it has the date on there golf clap golf clap all these dots i get it that's you know case that's their thing you know baron son's doing something man like gec like like uh cooper here just put the date on it and it ain't got it they put 2022 on here i'm fine with gec having the last two numbers like 07 is a 2007 or whatever just what it, just put the date on the knife don't make me have to go get a color code and uh, this card and look up dots it's just i get it for the collectors i do it you know i it's something you know it is what it is with case and i kind of i kind of understand you know the uniqueness why they want their dating system like that but uh, I'm just a, a old country boy from Polk County, Florida. Dumb it up for me a little bit. And just, hey, I can look at this. How, how old is this thing? Oh, this is a 2022. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's just me. But I like it. I personally like it when they put the date on uh, Tang Stamps. And you can just pick up your knife. And uh, you don't have to go back and do a full research like I do all the time. Okay, it was a 1951 through 58. If you put the date on there, if you put the year on there, there's no dating. I digress. Get off my soapbox. But I'm a fan of putting dates on knives. But anyway, I love this thing. Shout out, shout out to you, Aaron, for uh, taking this hawk bill out of it. And if you can see here, check it. This, if I can get it to shine right, look at that nice even edge. Of course, he had to re resharpen this, you know, when he uh, when he did his modify modification on it, and uh, he has got some nice. Again, if I can get this light to kind of help me here, but if you can see that there, nice even edges, good uh, good edge you put on this for me, Aaron. Got rid of that hawk spill, hawk bill, and uh, these are just workers. These are no frills. Put them in your pocket, around the house, around the shop, in the boat. Uh, probably wouldn't be my number one, my go-to knife for deer woods. Like I said, I cleaned, kind of cleaned a deer, uh, some deer antlers with this the other day. Wouldn't be my knife of choice for cleaning a deer or you know take it to the deer woods with me as my blade choice. It could pro this one with a clip point honestly could probably work. I would probably be fine with it. Just wouldn't be my go-to. That wouldn't be in the forefront of my forefront of my brain to tote this one. But could it do it? Yeah. But uh, you want a work knife user to throw in your pocket, and especially in this one right here, and just be able to go in your pocket. And boom! Look at that. In my pocket, dig it. I'm open. I'm ready to cut something. Hey. It may be an ugly duckling. I'm sure I'm going to get it in the comments that this is, yeah, HT, it's just not a good looking knife. You'll get no argument out of me. Uh, ugly, ducklings, uh, ugly ducklings can still uh, be good users, I can tell you that. Uh, I, I think this thing will, uh, I think it'll cut things. At the end of the day, yes, I'm a knife collector. I'm one of those, you know, I'm a nut that finds the beauty in them. These walk and talk and all that you hear about, hear about. I'm a knife nut. But at the end of the day, a, a knife is a tool that cuts things. That's why you buy, you know, before there was any of this knife collecting and all that, there were knives and you had a knife on you and you had a knife around you uh, that you could grab if you needed to cut things. And I'm here to tell you, 
this will cut things and do it well. So that's all I got. Shout out to Aaron for uh, fixing this one up for me. But uh, anyway, we're going to let you guys go. You know what to do. If you're still watching, click that like button. Don't cost you a thing. Not one iota. Helps the channel out. And right over here, we have the little bell, the on-screen family button. Uh, we are we are steady growing this channel. And it is all, <laughs> all because of you guys. And uh, I thank you for it. So with that being said, me and Ab's going to get out of here. Got the coffee over here. It should be good and cool now. We're going to sit out here and uh, watch it. Watch the rain drip off the uh, the rooftop here and enjoy that cup of joe. We love you. God bless. We're out. Look, knives gleaming under that old porch light. He'll tell their stories deep into the night. Reviews and torture tests. It's a sight to see. HGZDC. Live